Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's good to see you all. I get to do our announcements today as Father Jeff is out of town. As of this week, we have collected $284,807.86 for the roof repair fund, which is great. We're grateful for every dollar. Thank you. And Father Jeff would say, keep it coming. On October 14th and 15th, the Hispanic community will be selling tamales to help with the cost of repairing the parish roof. To place an order for tamales, you may contact Bernice at the parish office with a, either a phone call or an email, and her contact information is on the front of the bulletin, or inside the first cover, one of the two. Our hand chime choir is gearing up for the season. You too can learn to play, it's not hard. All you have to be able to do is go like that. We can teach you the rest. Join us on Wednesday evenings at six o'clock p.m. in the music room of church for rehearsals starting Wednesday, October 25th. If you're interested, you'd like more information, there's a flyer on the green table in the um, gathering space and a sign-up sheet if you'd like me to contact you. Our annual beans and rice drive to benefit the Migrant Farm Workers Project in Lexington, Missouri, will be during the weekends of October 15th and 22nd. That's next weekend and the weekend after. The donations will be delivered to Lexington on October 23rd. We are still in great need of Eucharistic ministers to serve at each of our mass times. We have an upcoming training, October 19th. It's not too late to register. There is a sign-up sheet if you'd like me to register. There's also a QR code if you have a phone and you'd like to register yourself. It's um, taught by Father Paul Turner, who's the diocesan director of the Office of Worship. And uh, there's also a registration link in the bulletin or on the website. So if you've ever thought about serving in that ministry, now is the time to answer the call. We really do need communion ministers. And I'm available after Mass if you have questions about what that's like. Lectors, the workbook for 2024, the lector workbook, is available for pickup in the sacristy. Please take the book with the envelope with your name on it. If you're able to make a donation of $10 to help defray the cost of the book, it's greatly ap appreciated. But if you can't make the donation, please take the book anyway. Thank you. And this weekend, we're pleased to welcome Father Akizu Kamina from the Divine Word Missionaries. If you would like to make a donation for this mission, please place your donations in the basket on the center round table in the gathering space. You'll see that it's clearly labeled out there. There are some information, some pamphlets um, and flyers w out there next to the basket too if you'd like more information. And he'll speak with us during his homily about the work that that missionary does. Do we have any birthdays to celebrate this week? October is a big month for birthdays, not as big as September, apparently. When's your birthday? The 11th, and how old will you be on the 11th? 12. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Any other birthdays to celebrate? Where's, when is your birthday? It was when? Yesterday. My birthday was yesterday too. Happy birthday, twin. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. How about anniversaries? Do we have any wedding anniversaries to celebrate? Okay, well, my anniversary is today. <laughs> 34 years. My husband figured if he married me the day after my birthday, he'd remember them both. I guess. And with that, we welcome Father and we begin. Please take out your gathering or your gather book, the blue hymnal, and turn to number 734, Bring Forth the Kingdom, number 734. Please stand. Breathe. 
Good evening. So it's good to be back home. Because last year, when I was here, after I came, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. <laughs> so I assume this year is going to happen again. That's why I decided to come back. All right? We have to keep winning. So thanks for being here, and uh, may God, during this Mass, he listen to our prayers and answer them and bless each one of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. My sisters and brothers, our God is generous. Our God is loving and merciful. Trusting in God's love for each one of us, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God, almighty ever living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what, what conscience dreads 
and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing now of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then <clears throat> he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done. Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I plan to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge. Give it to grazing. Break through its wall. Let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You drove up the nations and planted it. It stretched out its branches to the sea. To the river it stretched out its shoots. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then why? You broken down its walls, plucked by all who pass by the way. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beast of the field. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Turn again, we implore, look down from heaven and see. 
This and this vine and protected, the vine your right hand has planted. The son of man you have claimed for yourself. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine forth, and we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about th these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Oh, you, o Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third one they stoned. Again, he sent other servants more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. 
Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire the inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give them the proper, the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So first of all, I have to make a disclaimer. I'll try to speak as slow as I can. <laughs> because uh, English is uh, one of the seven languages that I speak and I might get confused. I don't want to be speaking Kabir or uh, French to you. So I'll speak slow, I promise. And I'll be also short and sweet. So my name is uh, Father Akizu Gerard Kamina. Even though my name sounds Japanese, I'm not Japanese. So usually people think when I say Akizu, ah, it's close to Japanese. So this guy might be Japanese until they see me. Then they are disappointed. I'm a Divine Word missionary, SVD. I'm from Togo, a small country in West Africa. As Divine Word missionaries, we are currently also uh, working at our college seminary in Iowa, where I teach. I'm a professor of theology, and I also teach mathematics in college. As Divine Word missionaries, we work in more than uh, 80 countries all over the world, and we are present in all five continents of our planet. So when I was discerning my vocation to become a missionary, I thought missionary life is always sweet. You eat uh, steak, have uh, a lobster at every dinner. So hopefully I can get lobster tonight. <laughs> and have good wine. So I thought missionary life is always like that. Of course it is. People are going to invite you over, right? For a nice steak, pork rib, or you know, so on. But there are also challenges that we face as missionaries. A number of years ago, I was assigned, and last year I talked about this, I was assigned to work in the Amazon. Not Amazon shopping. The Amazon rainforest in South America, in Brazil. So I didn't speak Portuguese before going to Brazil. So I got to Brazil, I needed to learn Portuguese in order to do ministry. So I was in Sao Paulo, I learned Portuguese in Sao Paulo. And so my superior asked me to move to the Amazon. So before I got there, because of the shortage of the need of missionaries in those areas, the bishop, when he heard that I was coming, two months before I got there, I received a letter from the bishop. Okay, you're going to be the vocation director. You're going to be uh, the youth chaplain. And then you're going to help in the missions. I said, gee, this is a lot. So why don't you wait, me to get, wait for me to get there? And so because of the need of missionaries in those, in those areas. So I work in a small diocese, or in a big diocese, I would say, in the southern part of the state of Amazonas, a diocese called Umaita. So we had a parish in the town, and so he, 
on top of that, the bishop gave us uh, what they call mission. So we have about 70 churches throughout the jungle. So we have to travel by boats. No roads inside. And so I still remember my very first trip. The captain warned me. He said, uh, Padre, uh, before, because we have a big boat, and so during dry season, we couldn't get inside the lake. We are like big lakes over there. So we have the river and then you have lakes inside. So because of the level of war, it's low. So the big boat cannot get in. So we had to use a small motorized boat to travel inside the lake. So before getting on the small motorized boat, he said, please, if there is a movement, you have to stay steady. And so as you know me, I, you know, I always laugh, right? I thought it was a joke. So I started laughing. He said, okay. So we started getting inside the lake. So at one point, because you have crocodiles are huge in the Amazon. And so at one point, we hit the engine. The engine hit the back of the crocodile. And so this, the boat went up. Huh. I cannot say how many Hail Marys I said <laughs> before we came down. Because just looking at the amount of crocodiles around us, woo, they will be happy. They will say, Thanks, Lord, for this fresh meat from Africa. <laughs> and so one, once I traveled with the bishop, because the bishop also had to travel by boat for confirmation inside the jungle. So most of the time as a youth chaplain, I had to travel with him, prepare young adults for confirmation, and then he confirmed them the following day. And so one night, because over there, you, when you get inside the lake, the commercial boat only travels on the river. So then you have radios. So you wait and then they, you know, call on the radio uh, so that you come, they come and pick you uh, uh, <clears throat> inside the lake and then take you with the small motorized boat and take you outside the lake and uh, you can get on the big boat, the commercial boat. But the boat doesn't stop. The, go the boat keeps moving. And so you have to manage that right, they go closer and sometimes it's so scary, right? Because the boat is moving up and down and just a single mistake, you get inside, you get smashed. And so with the bishop, I said, that guy, I really admire him as a bishop. And so we were waiting, mosquitoes up, eating us, but we have to wait for the, and the big boat, the commercial boat to pass by and then they can come and pick us up. And uh, we, I, we had a flashlight, so I switched on the, the, the flashlight and the, trying to see what is happening. So I could see lights, things blinking. I thought, what? I thought oh, it was something. No, only crocodiles. They are waiting for a single mistake so they can enjoy the meat, the fresh meat, especially from Togo. And mosquitoes. Those journeys, you, know, you encounter big mosquitoes. And so you don't kill one. You kill one, or others are going to come for the funeral, and then they're going to ask you questions. <laughs> so by the time they finish questioning you, you I mean, you lose about uh, two gallons of your blood. And the heat, unbelievable. But despite all these challenges, right, the people we served in the jung inside the jungle, you know, they really gave me joy as a missionary. I was very happy, right, getting to their communities, seeing them, spending time with them, and bringing the good news, and telling them that even though you are far inside the jungle, you are not alone, that we, to your brothers and sisters as Christians, we also share your joy and your pain. So my brothers and sisters, I have many stories. I don't want to keep you too long. But first of all, I would like to thank you for your generosity. Because you've been supporting the church in many ways. As divine word missionaries, we are not doing just our mission. We are doing the mission of the church. 
all of us, by virtue of our baptism, we are missionaries. But some, some of us, you know, can travel, play with crocodiles as I did. Others cannot do that. But your generosity is able to, eh, to allow those who are willing to do it to carry on that, those missions. So I would like to thank you for your spiritual support. Whenever you pray for missionaries, we feel it as missionaries. Despite the challenges that we face, we know that there are people praying for us and then we keep going. And thank you so much for your prayers. Second, I would like to thank you also for your financial support because you've been helping the church, you know, financially. Right? Not just divine word missionaries, not just because of this mission appeal that you bet. You've been doing it in many ways, even supporting the parish, the diocese, to keep on, you know, helping those who are in need and so on. And thank you for your generosity, right? your financial support that you give to the church. We are very great as church. And finally, every mission is costly. When I was in the Amazon, uh, just the missions inside the jungle, we, every year we spent about $20,000 just to keep up for that mission. And so I'm here to ask for uh, uh, more of your support, more of your financial support. So that, you know, all these missions, it's not just in the Amazon, it's, just, it's not just that mission that we have. In all The missions that we have all over the world are in need of help to carry on that, uh, those various missions. And so may God always bless you for all that you do for the church. May God always reward you and bless you abundantly for your love, your care, and your generosity. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, not substantial with the Father, great in all things will be. Trusting in God's love for each one of us, let us bring before God our prayers and petitions. Of God. For the church that it produced fruit for the kingdom of God through acts of love, humility, and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For lawmakers around the world, that they may be moved by the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, to enact policies that protect life at every stage 
and do away with capital punishment, we pray to the Lord. For all who tend the fields and bring food to our tables, that God will strengthen them and protect them in their labors, we pray to the Lord. For all with mental illness, particularly those with depression, that God's healing love will free them and open new possibilities for them, we pray to the Lord. That the challenging message of the parables strengthen us to produce a harvest worthy of the master's trust, we pray to the Lord. That the kingdom of God may be given to our departed brothers and sisters who made manifest the fruits of the kingdom in their lives, especially to Lola Barrios and Richard Roberts, we pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon each one of us, and we ask you to receive and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. We sing together number 622, Canticle of the Turning, number 622. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service graciously complete this, the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from, from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it, to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognize him the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, Saint Sabina, and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters. And to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine te teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your, and spirit. With your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We sing together number 940, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, number 940.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming. And uh, I have some magazines you know, on the table. So <laughs> you want to read more about uh, missionaries all over the world, some crocodiles and so on. So you can, <laughs> uh, you can find, you know, just grab one on your way home. And please, thank you so much for all that you do for the church and for missionaries. And please continue to pray for us. We need your prayers. Everybody can give that one. And please, when you gather as family for meals once a week, remember to say even one Hail Mary for missionaries uh, is well and uh, very appreciated. And thank you so much. And may God always bless you for your generosity and your kindness. And this year, I'm very sure that the Chiefs are going to win again. <laughs> But I'm still waiting for uh, my Super Bowl hat, so <laughs> that's why I came back to get it. <laughs> so thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Thanks be to God. We sing together number nine, 493, Change Our Hearts, 493. <laughs> Change our hearts this time, your word says it can be. Change our minds this time, your life could make us free. We are the people, your call set apart, Lord, this time. Change our hearts. Change.